Good morning. We got some exciting stuff happening. A bunch of them molting. That one's getting ready to molt. Should be soon. Just molted. And this one is still drying out after molting. Uh, he literally just ate his skin because a second ago he was turning his facing down so he just finished eating his skin so I freshened up their container for food even though that looks like grass that's not that's just a little piece of food moved some of the ones that were bigger and molted earlier into a separate container because as they get bigger, <clears throat> they need to be separated out. Because this little thing is not big enough for <clears throat> eight of the big fat Fiffin Star caterpillars like that. I have not cleaned that one yet, so that one's next on my list. But here we go, he's eating his skin. See the one on the left is still drying. Its little face is not dry. Looks a little odd. Keep an eye on that one. skin. I know it sounds gross, but that skin is full of protein and is very healthy for them to eat. I would worry about any monarch caterpillar that did not eat that skin. And they chow down pretty quick. It does not take them long. I feel like we need some background music for this one. You can tell the ones that have just recently molted, like literally just molted a lot by their color. See the color of the legs. Still not dried. They're still white. The face is still white. Sorry, I was just comparing this one to the other one that just molted. usually don't get to see them this fresh after molting. I usually do it behind my back. And I'll do it as soon as you're not looking. I got lucky this morning. I got to watch one just finish molting. And these guys had obviously just molted by the time I got up here.
you have to be very, very careful about not touching them, not dropping them, not disturbing them too much after they've molted because they are extremely vulnerable when they're still damp. Just dropping one after it's just molted is enough to kill it because they don't have <clears throat> none of that new skin needs to dry out and harden. Oh, looks like we have somebody attempting to escape. Almost all gone. And usually, once they've dried, they are ravenous. After they eat their skin, it like jump starts their hunger. So, once they fully dried, they will attack that food with a <coughs> viciousness you don't usually see in lions. Which is why when they get bigger, I start separating them. Alright, Mr. Escape Artist, we're going to put an end to this. No running away. It's food. We either get on to food or go back down. Thank you. And just like that, he's all gone. You can see the two little face masks right there and right there they do not eat those so they eat everything but that and but that <clears throat> so you can usually see when you have had one molt uh, not only will your caterpillar be changed but you'll have the little face masks Don't disturb your neighbor, please. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on this bunch. Actually, I'm gonna smear a little bit of food up on top. So this guy has a distraction from his neighbor. I haven't really experienced any problems with them molting near each other, but I'd rather not risk it, so I'll stick a little food next to that one. Now I'm going to set my phone down for a second <clears throat> so I can get this lid on without disturbing any of the four that are up there, so enjoy the extreme close-up of my knee. Just pushing the top down very gently. Because they're all in a very delicate situation. And this is an airtight lid, so it'll kind of snap. And I would rather it not snap very hard. I'm putting the container lid back on like this. I'll leave the last corner 
<clears throat> we'll do the last corner. That's the one that's the farthest away from all the caterpillars because it tends to snap a little bit more. Are you still trying to run away? All right, we've got some nice big chubby fourth end stars over here. Now these guys are getting close to time when they will molt into fifth end stars. And when they do that, that will be my first batch of fifth end stars that have been raised on the milkweed replacement diet. So, <clears throat> thus far, I can say that the diet is successful and that they seem to be thriving. So far, we haven't had any issues with molting. Um, nobody looks sick. Everything seems to be going on time according to, you know, the temperature. The temperature th slows things down a little bit. And instead of being in the high 80s, we've been in the low 80s, mid 70s, dipping down into the 60s at night. <clears throat> This is also why I'm not baking in any more eggs. It is coming to the end of our monarch season. And I want these guys to be able to join the migrators as they head south. So, I mean, you can still take the eggs in if you want to, but what's gonna end up happening takes 28 days approximately from egg to caterpillar possibly longer if the weather cools down and slows them down. And if you release in October, you don't have very many nectar producing plants that are still going. So even if the temperature is warmer, <clears throat> they start losing their food source. They, uh, it starts getting colder if it dips down below 50, you know, 55, 50, they become uh, unable to move, which leaves them vulnerable to predators. If it dips below 45, that can kill them. So you would be really, you know, putting all of this work and effort into raising a butterfly that would either starve or freeze to death, which is why we want them to leave with the migration. And it's different for every every area. Um, there is a chart. I will try to find it and uh, put a link to it with this video. You find your latitude and it gives you the peak migration Time, and that's when you want to be releasing the, the last of your butterflies. So you have to kind of aim for that. Okay, you're going to have to put your lid back on. You're going to keep wandering. Um, <clears throat> so, this is why I'm not taking on any more eggs. Uh, if I find a caterpillar that is already going. I did find one yesterday on accident. I brought in a couple leaves for the big guys and there was caterpillar on it. Same age group as, was it those ones? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was these ones. Same age group as these ones. So I brought it in. Uh, it will make a uh, you know, it'll, it'll be on time for the migration. So if I find any caterpillars, I will bring them in. But I will not be collecting any more eggs. And anybody who is doing this or plans to do this should research when the cutoff time is for peak migration so that your butterflies have the best chance possible to make the migration to Mexico. These guys have been chowing down on some butternut squash. For some reason, this 
these two do not like my butterfly weed. So as you can see, I've, I've got a couple butterfly weed branches in there and they have been rejecting that and only wanting my broad leaves. Uh, common milkweed, which I'm running extremely low on at this point. So, uh, butternut squash it is. I mean, I, I do leave both in there so that they have the option. But later, the later in the season, the more the milkweed leaves kind of toughen up and get unpalatable. So it's important to have options, which I now know butternut squash is a good option. And I actually hung the butternut squash using some plain dental floss, no peppermint, no flavoring. And I just poked a couple holes and hung it. That way the frass falls to the bottom where it belongs. And yeah, I was quite impressed with myself for doing that. So now I don't have to worry about them being on the bottom of the container with all the poop. We don't like that. I don't know if you can hear that scratching sound. I don't know why they do it. But I have heard several of them making that noise. I stopped now. Oh, there it goes again. I don't know if that'll be uh, something that you can hear in the video. But if you hear that noise, don't, don't freak out. I don't know what the little nutcase is doing. I'm going to try to get him on some new food and see if he'll chill out a little bit. These guys are quite happy. They just cleaned their container and gave him fresh food. They've already pooped. That's what they do. And that's pretty much it for, for the update. Um, Hannibal and Graham got moved into was this container? No, it was not that container. They got upgraded. Yes, it was this container. So Hannibal has another caterpillar in there. This one's getting ready to molt. And there's another one on the bottom. So Hannibal and Graham have a new roommate. And Hannibal still hasn't eaten anybody else, so yay for not cannibalizing anybody else. This one of the newbies, they've just taken their leaf away according to the instructions and the advice of the people who sell this stuff. Once they turn yellow, that's when you need to take the leaf away. So that's what I did. And we're missing somebody. All right, I have to investigate this further. I am thinking that my two eggs are duds. Still no black tipping. This one on the right still kind of looks like it might do something. This one seems to have just kind of congealed at the bottom. I'm not seeing a baby caterpillar in there. So I'm going to isolate the egg on the left from the egg on the right. And uh, maybe we'll still get a caterpillar, but I'm not hopeful with these two. This will make my third dud egg. So they might, they just might not have been fertilized, which is entirely possible. So if one of the females that I released didn't get a chance to mate before she came back and played these, that would be 
one reason for them not being fertilized. So, yeah, we may not have any new caterpillars unless they're wild, but that's okay. I will still be busy after this with starting new milkweed plants from seed and from cuttings and uh, making plans for next year's group. So, as I've mentioned before, I'll be looking for ways to be more efficient and, <clears throat> uh, you know, hopefully just make life better for the caterpillars and things a bit easier for myself. Not that I haven't enjoyed every second of this experience I, I have. I, I've really loved doing this. Um, I've been able to talk to people, help raise awareness, sharing my videos um, with people who, you know, normally wouldn't get a chance to to hear about this kind of stuff. So that's what it's all about, raising awareness, helping the monarch, helping the milkweed tussock moth, helping the fireflies, helping the milkweed beetle, helping them all, mostly monarchs, but uh, all of the insect life that we need in our ecosystem. That's very important. So, I will say goodbye for this morning and get back to work taking care of my little guys. Bye.